Hello, and welcome to The Nature Connection, Science, Wildlife, and Environment Radio, with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy. Hey, welcome to The Nature Connection, everybody, with Nancy and Lisa, the publishers of Big Blend Radio and TV magazine. And you know, we have a nature connection in there for sure. And today's nature connection is in the Waitomo Caves in northern New Zealand. And travel writer Debbie Stone will be joining us uh, to talk about this underground experience that does deal with glowworms and maggots. Or are they the same thing? She's going to tell us all about it. It's super cool, interesting. Uh, you know Debbie, uh, we call her the fire monkey, so it really makes sense that she played with glowworms. I'm just yes. saying. She's attracted um, to light. She is. She is. <laughs> and uh, you can see her stories up on Blend Radio and TV.com, including this one, which is in the summer issue, the early summer issue of Big Blend Radio and TV magazine. So welcome back. Fire Monkey, uh, did you enjoy your glowworm experience? <laughs> oh, it was, it, was, it was so, so interesting and, and very illuminating, as they <laughs> would say. But anyway, yeah, no, it was, uh, you know, caves, I think caves are really cool. I've been in a number yeah. of caves. And I mean, here in New Mexico, we've got, you know, Carlsbad, the caverns, you know, which are really quite special. And, uh, you know, I've been in a number of other caves. And uh, so I, I, you know, when I hear about that something is, uh, you know, there's a cave experience that's unique. Uh, why not? And so this yeah. one, uh, the Waitomo Caves, is a, a very unique uh, set of caves because there uh, are glowworms, actually, and they are very special for New Zealand. And they are very interesting, uh, unique types of creatures um, that you can that actually do light up the the ceiling of the cave and these wow. these blue little lights that look like little twinkle twinkle little stars and uh, yeah it's it's um, you know I was curious I was curious about it because I'm like okay I've never seen glowworms before so I need to go and see these yeah wow and so this is all near Auckland right yes. Okay. Yes. You know, so, within within a couple hours, everything, you know, the the you know things are not that far. You know, in in uh, you know New Zealand's not a huge country made up of it's just made up of two islands. There's actually only a, you know only a couple million people living in uh, between those two islands, and many of them are living most of them are living in Auckland or in some of the other major you know cities. But uh, yeah, no, it's you know it's only a, within a couple hours, so it's it's yeah everything's you know, fairly reachable. Um, and this is a very, you know, very popular place. People have read about it, heard about it. And so it's kind of on uh, visitors maps, so to speak. And mm. uh, yeah, so we uh, took a tour, you take a tour. And uh, so you get to go down into the caves. And uh, then you get to hear about the cave formations as well as the glowworms. Oh, wow. So the so glowworms are actually hmm. maggots. They are, and our guide was pretty funny because he said, you know, these glowworms are not worms, they're actually maggots, and he said, yeah. you know, nobody would probably come in and pay to see a glow maggot cave. Mm -hmm. So really, I think it was a marketing ploy. It's a marketing yeah. ploy, I think. So, yeah. <laughs> do, they, do they only come from New Zealand, or are they... Supposedly elsewhere? they are, you no, know, they're supposedly unique to, to New Zealand, from what I understand. So, so wow. where does the light come from? Is it kind of like fireflies? It's, you know, they light, the, the creatures light up uh, yeah, kind of like that. And they light up like that when they're hungry. And so it's an attraction for the little insects and everything. They're, they gravitate towards that light. And then once they do, each glowworm has like these really like kind of sticky strands. These like, it's like a web. And so Ew. of course the insect doesn't know that and gets, you know, trapped in the web and then the glowworm sucks up the insect Ew. into its body so you know so when you see them twinkling you say to yourself oh they're hungry you know so oh my gosh this is crazy this is like it's like advertising right <laughs> come on in come on yeah, in, come on in. <laughs> this is this is insane so when you went because didn't you did do you walk through do you i mean do you get yes you, you start out too 
Yeah, you start out by walking through and you walk through various levels and rooms into the, the cave. And there, you know, you start at the top and then you go down into the cave. And at the bottom um, is this kind of waterway, you know, river in, in the cave, a kind of subterranean waterway. And you get onto, into a boat and you, uh, you know, your, your guide, uh, you know, takes the, the oars and basically you go down the river and he'll tell you, you know, to sit back and, you know, look at the ceiling and, you know, all of a sudden it's just like you're, you know, mesmerized by all this light. And it's just, it's really I, just a very cool experience to do that. Mm. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird. It is. It, it is. It's, it's very weird. But the caves itself are very, you know, cool. I mean, the glow worms, of course, make them, the you know, glow worms make them very special. But like in any cave, there's very cool formations with the, you know, the stalagmites and the stalagmites. And um, I did learn, you know, the difference. And I have learned the difference over the years, but sometimes I forget. But this guide had a really good good way to to mm. uh, uh, tell the difference, you know, about, you know, do you know how, do you know the difference? You know the difference, don't you? I think the stalactites are at the top because they hang tight to the ceiling. Yeah, yep, yeah. yep. And the, stal and the stalagmites, they say, he, he said to us, because they might be able to reach the, mm. the tights, so to speak. Yeah, so, something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's how they do it. But they, you know, these ones were so cool. They, you know, they resembled all sorts of creatures. You know, yeah. animals and people and you know, ETs and all the kinds of thing. It was like this modern art gallery, and you know, you can see whatever you want in those shapes. And and they're, you know, to me, they're it, they're very very cool. I like seeing the uh, cave shapes. And this was this was quite quite nice there was quite a lot of them and then um they have this uh, the, the one that's really cool is this uh the uh, cathedral which is this really tall chamber and it's actually has great acoustics and they told mm. us that there's been a lot of singers and a lot of groups that have come there and have actually performed in the cathedral uh because of those acoustics Wow, and then you got your guide sang you a song in there. Yes, yes. Wow. A, a, the guide sang us a Maori love song. Actually, many of the guides, and our guide included, and the employees there are descendants of a Maori chief, the one who actually was one of the original explorers and actually showed the caves to uh, uh, a pair of English surveyors. And uh, all three of them were responsible for really basically, you know, charting the whole area out and uh, bringing it to light, so to speak. But yeah, no, so he sang us this lovely Maori love song and it really illustrated the, uh, the wonderful acoustics. Wow, this is neat. And the one thing I want to, and, and the history of it, I mean, could you imagine all of a sudden yeah. going into a web of glow worms and going Ew. like, hello? <laughs> oh, God. You know, it's like, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wonder if they, like, you know, you're on a boat and all of a sudden, like, you know, what's that touching my face? You know? Yeah, yeah, you know, definitely. That, you know how you, when you're hiking and you go and the, you're the first one through the cobwebs, you know, that yep. feeling? Yep. Yes. Know, yes. That feeling so well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, so, so do I. So do I. And then I. you wonder, like, was there something on there? Then you yeah. do you do the? Is it now to do time to do the dance? You know. Yeah. So it's a very yeah. it's a it's a trippy feeling. But um, it was interesting that you were talking about like now three hundred limestone caves. So I'm wondering about wine since they have limestone, like if they're making wine out there. Oh, and gosh. I know because it always kind of happens. But um, you have you have wine on the brain, I think. Don't well, you? wine, wine, it, wine, and from what I've learned from all the winemakers we've interviewed is that good uh, Burgundy and Pinot Noir comes from really good limestone in <laughs> areas. So I'm just wondering if there was, did you have any good New Zealand wine? Oh, con continually throughout the whole country. Okay. And we in just, fact, and in fact, on the, the South Island, when I uh, did my uh, two week hiking tour there, um, we visited the largest wine region in uh, New Zealand, which I'll talk about in another episode. Oh, oh <laughs> we definitely want to know about that. We, yeah, we, we sampled Mount Beautiful wines from New Zealand. Yes. And yes. I thought they were pretty darn good. Uh, they are. They're very wonderful. Refreshing and lovely experience. So I'd give yes. them a shout out on that. But 300 limestone caves, but you said, okay, so there's mm. the stalagmites and stalactites and glow worms. And so all these magical, unique, amazing things. But you said there was like a cave flower in there, like a fungus. Yeah, the, there's like a fungus on the, on the, the, uh, the wall, you know, like mushroom-like 
uh, uh, it looks like a mushroom and, and it's kind of a cave called a cave flower so yeah it's it but it is a fungi you know so and i think you know if you think about fungi and i mean if you come across them they are sometimes extremely beautiful they're very mm -hmm. artistic in shapes and i think they're very cool and i'm, I'm always taking pictures of fungi on trees and things they're very cool mm -hmm. i'm oh, they're remember, awesome we've been doing yes. this whole study of you know gardens and native plant things and i have to every time i start putting oh and fungi in there realizing that fungus is not a plant it is i have to keep reminding myself because it's part it's got its part own animal. distinction it's part animal part plant it has its own little thing its own little species thingy and it's not a plant that's interesting no, isn't it weird is, that is it's, that is really neat so when it's we're its eating its own thing if you're a vegetarian and a vegan eating a mushroom yeah. you need to think twice well, yeah, because if it is, a, if it is something that's not a plant, yes. You know. What is it? Like, it's its own thing. So it's, it's a kind tweener. of, yeah. It's a tweener. It, I, I was, you know, because we interviewed uh, the author, Christopher Lloyd of Humanimal, and he was like, no, Lisa, this is not a plant. And he's a you know, science dude, and writes for the Sunday Times in England and, you know, all, wow. the, all that stuff. And has done all these books and really knows his stuff. And if you're going to have anyone teach you the history of the world or the natural history of the world, Christopher Lloyd is your dude. But uh, when, and then I was doing this research, it was Point Reyes National Seashore, and I was writing all these things and the fungus here, the, this and this, and they go, listen, we're categorizing in here because that's where people go in the plant mm -hmm. section. But remember, they are not a plant. And I'm like, this is weird. I have to keep remembering But you know, they, they, they are very... Um... I don't know, their shapes are interesting, the texture is interesting, mm. um, you know, I just, because it's, they, um, it's very, they, I think they're, they're very cool. They grow without light. Yeah. I mean, plants need light to grow. That's it's true. It's kind of a pseudo plant. It, if it was a real plant, it couldn't grow because there's no light and they need the light in order right. to feed themselves. Mm, right. So right. one wonders what these plants feed themselves on. Ooh. I know. <laughs> I'm, they're just, I'm, they're, they're, to me, I like just, I, I think they're just, they're like little works of art, you mm -hmm. know, they're just, they're just, they're just different. And some people are like, oh, fungus or whatever, but I think it's no, they're, they're they're cool. interesting. Yeah, so do I. I yeah. think it's really neat, like lichen. And so lichen, I yes. think, yes. is also not a plant. Yeah. Oh, lichen I, is, and, and also, you know, those ones where they're, what are they, you know, where they're like, um, they're like a, one is the host, you know, and one is the, the, mm -hmm. you know the like the they are hanging on to the host or the yeah you know, like mistletoe it, 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 yeah and like one is like a nurse log or something and you know it's yeah. just, it's very interesting it's like this 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 very interesting relationship that exists you know symbiosis it's, yes yes it's yes. i i dig it i get i geek out on it and i'm i need i need to find a fungus expert now like and i'm i just think it's so cool <laughs> that you went i mean you can say that you went on a boat ride through a glowworm grotto. Who yes. gets to say that, you know, that yeah, often? It's, it's, and so I hope it's a very unique experience. Yep. If you go to New Zealand, go through the grotto, see the glowworms, yes. and do you got to do the the, the wiggle, wiggle shake. <laughs> so we're gonna play that <laughs> song. <laughs> so, I don't have a glowworm song, but um, I do have the base station wiggle, and I thought that. <laughs> well, did they wiggle? Did they move at all? You know, they, they just, what we saw is they, the blinking, you know what I mean? The, uh, the blue, you know, light of blinking kind of thing. And then um, when he actually showed us with a little light, it was completely dark. And then he showed us a light to, so we could see those strands that dangle down that otherwise you would not be able to see. Um, you could see those little tiny you know those like threads that hang way down and mm -hmm. so um yeah but you know the only thing and that those web you know those those little like strands kind of like move and you know of course if they're affected by air or whatever um otherwise the only thing that you can see really um when you're you know there unless he really takes the guide shows you is basically the the blue light that's blinking you know so wow. so i'm reading this thing about glowworms and they say they that's just the larvae and they grow into beetles later. Yeah. And then the, they say that the, the adult glowworms don't have mouths and the females mimic mating flashes of other lightning bugs to attract other bugs and then they eat them. 
<laughs> yep, that's what they do. Yeah, they do. I know that. I know a guide said that there were several different stages of the glow yeah. worm. You know, yeah. so yeah, wow. so it, it's it's just um. But you know, when you learn that you when you think about it, when you're seeing all these lovely lights, and you're not thinking that they're hungry and sucking up insects. Because... Yeah, they're like they're eating <laughs> each other to light up the cage. <laughs> like... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> this is bizarre. This I want to go for that. Did anybody freak out on the tour? Like, no. Anybody no, get creeped no. out? I think if no, you're going to go there, you're into it. You know what no, I mean? Everybody was, was very excited about seeing oh, them. Very you know, cool. I think, you know, people know what, you know, you, you know what a cave is like, you know, if you enter yeah. into a cave, you know. So, but this, I think people were really, really jazzed to see glow worms. You know? Yeah. That's and you're not allowed to take photos in there, right? That you, the you photos can't. You, you, and, and I understand that. Photos. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty preservation i mean when we go in caves right. on our tour the love your park store i mean crystal yep. cave and places yeah. like that you have to take your shoes and dip them in this and that and make sure you yep. don't hurt the bats and you know yep. so there's um these caves i mean coronado national memorial in in southern arizona i went down in that cave with a park ranger mm -hmm. and um it was it's a dead cave and there's a big difference between going through a living cave and a dead right. cave yeah. And it's, it's, it's sad. Yeah. Well, yeah. it says yeah. here, like the light is to attract mates. So if you go and use your flash camera, you can expect all those glow worms to <laughs> land on you. <laughs> and eat you. And I'm going to, I'm just not going to say any more than that. <laughs> They're going to eat you. Okay. So you know what, Nancy, you're, you're, you're going to be beamed up is what it's going to happen. I know. Okay. You know she's into aliens. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have nightmares. Now. I've always told her she's an alien. You know. Attack of the 50-foot glowworm. I know. I want to do a sci-fi movie over it. Especially oh, the gosh. sticky strands. They're going to come out after you and like swatch you with strands of goo. Now, come okay, sorry. All right. So everybody, whytomo.com is the website to go to. It's W A I. T-O-M-O, -O, Waitomo, and uh, Waitomo.com, and of course, Debbie's article. You can see it on Blend Radio and TV.com right now, and also in the early summer issue of Big Blend Radio and TV magazine uh, in our, uh, you know, our wonderful sum early summer issue in our Nature Connection section. And I want to thank everyone for joining us. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, Big Blend Radio airs Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Uh, you can keep up with all our episodes, listen as they go live or anytime later on demand at bigblendradio.com. But if we always like to play music for you, our audience, and also Debbie. We had to. This is <laughs> this is the base station wiggle. Like right yay, now. Yay! <laughs> yay! And it's so appropriate. You played Glowworm, and I'm like, wiggle. Uh, so this song is written by the base station band. And uh, actually, everyone, you'll hear Deborah Crooks with her new album out. She's the lead singer there. Uh, this is from their album, Other Desert Cities. And uh, they recorded it here from their trip to Joshua Tree National Park. And that's where we oh, are fun. currently on our Love Your Parks tour. And uh, the song is called Bay Station Wiggle, again, off of the album Other Desert Cities. You can keep up with them at baystationband.com. So here it is. Everybody, get your wiggle on. I love the way you wiggle Just a ride 